Um, well, uh, on behalf, sorry. well, uh, in behalf of myself, um, Hematology and Stem Cell Transplant Division at National Guard Riyadh, I would like to thank the committee for selecting us as a winning as the best winning paper for 2023, and um, I would like to thank Dr. Mohsen Zahrani who had. Um, an obvious fingerprint on this achievement. Without forgetting um, to thanks Prof. Ahmed Al-Askar for giving us the opportunity to be here, and Dr. Ayman Al-Hujazi for his uh, tremendous support. Um, we have been honored to present our oral abstract in ASH a couple of months ago, and now again we are honored to present it here in Jeddah. So without further delay, um, our abstract title uh, was Favorable Fertility Outcome in Large Cohort of Sickle Cell Disease Patient Undergoing uh, Allogenic Hemovaric Stem Cell Transplantation. Uh, so speaking about the burden of disease in Saudi Arabia, as you can see, according to uh, a last update from the Ministry of Health, we have more than 100,000 patients of sickle cell disease. These patients represent 0.2% of the whole population. And as you can see here in the map, most of them are located in the uh, eastern region and in the southern west area. And uh, according to a study published by Professor Sultan and his colleagues, 10,000 uh, patients of these patients in need for transplant taken in consideration only um, severe indication, including uh, vasoclusive crisis, acute chest syndrome, and stroke. As we all know that hemovaric stem cell transplant is a um, curative uh, therapy for sickle cell disease. However, uh, one of the uh, negative um, outcome is the premature gonadal failure and infertility. Uh, many transplant related factors can increase or decrease uh, this risk. Uh, both male and females have a different risk factor that may impact the fertility post transplant. Therefore, uh, those patients should undergo uh, fertility preservation counseling uh, pre-transplant. And in this study, we've reported uh, the fertility outcome of large cohort uh, patient undergoing an amyloblative uh, conditioning regimen. So uh, having a quick look our, uh, on our conditioning protocol that we use for them, as I mentioned, it's an amyloablative um, conditioning protocol which is a of uh, one milligram per kilogram as a total dose over five days, starting from day minus seven up to day minus three, followed by um, total body radiation of 300 uh, centigrade with um, gonadal shielding for male patient, then a rest day, followed by uh, unmanipulated hemovirus stem cell transplant infusion for them. So, Preservation uh, fertility, uh, pre-transplant fertility preservation protocol in our center, it's a sperm cryopreservation after holding hydroxyurea for, uh, for three months for male patient and testicular shielding for them during the TBI session as, as I've mentioned. While for our female patient, we got, they got referred to a specialized oncology fertility clinic where they get counseled for either uh, oocyte cryopreservation or treatment with a GNRH uh, agonist pre-transplant and hopefully in the future uh, tissue uh, implantation. After IRB approval, we retrospectively collected the data for all sickle cell patients who underwent allogenic stem cell transplant in our center from 2015 up to 2022 and our inclusion criteria were uh, all sickle adult patient and adolescent who are 14 and above, and a myeloablative condition in ophelintuzumab total body radiation with a minimum of uh, one year follow-up. Uh, and our exclusion criteria were those who got expired or needed second transplant or those who used a, a different conditioning regimen than we've mentioned. Uh, our primary objective was to assist the post-transplant fertility by the ability to conceive for the married patient and the presence of the viable sperms on semen analysis that done one or two uh, or three years post-transplant for male patient and for female patient regaining of their menstruation. While our secondary objective is to, to assist pre-transplant fertility and uh, success of, fer of different fertility preservation method such as uh, sperm cryopreservation or oocyte cryopreservation 
GnRH analogs and to assess the uh, for the risk factor for a pre-transplant, the effect of the fertility potentials. Actually, our transplant in our center for sickle cell started it in 2015. A total of 200 sickle cell patients underwent hemobiotic um, stem cell transplant were eligible for uh, this study. We started our preservation, uh, fertility preservation program in October 2019, where 50% uh, of female patients and 56 of our uh, male patients got counseled for uh, this preservation methods. Having a quick look at the patient characteristic, uh, as I mentioned, there were a total of 200 patients, uh, 112 uh, male patients, and 88 female patients. 58 of them were married, and 142 uh, were single, with a median age of 26 years. An indication goes mostly to a recurrent vasoclusive crisis, followed by stroke, then acute chest syndrome. Hydroxyurea used by all of them, and the median dose was uh, 1,000 milligram. Uh, with a median duration of use uh, of two to five years uh, in general. Uh, having a look at the uh, laboratory results, as you can see that um, uh, we have shown a significant uh, improvement in the hemoglobin to 135 post a transplant and significant drop of the hemoglobin S and the uh, ferritin. Uh, LH, FSH almost remain the same while AMH and testosterone uh, drop significantly post-transplant. And just to mention, our median duration of follow-up was 3.5 years. So pre-transplant uh, fertility results for our patient among our 58 married, married patients, 82% of them had children pre-transplant, uh, and among our 112 patients, 36 of them attempt sperm cryopreservation with success rate of 91%. And among our 88 female patients, one patient had amenorrhea pre-transplant, six attempt oocyte cryopreservation and all were successful. Just one of them developed a cerebral venous thrombosis and 39 of our female patients received a leprolyte pre-transplant with no direct complication to mention. The post-transplant fertility result among our 57 uh, married patients uh, 26 of them were able to conceive, and just to elaborate more in this 26 pregnancy, so 20 of them ended with um, successful live birth, one ended with abortion, uh, five were still uh, pregnant the time that we wrote the abstract, six, uh, six patients were able to conceive twice, and one patient had one twin babies. Among our 112 patients, 74 of them, they did semen analysis at, at least of one year, 47% uh, has, has spermia and 53 had viable uh, sperm. The majority of our patients recovered their spermatogenesis at one year, which is 24 patients, nine at two years, and three at three years. And just to mention that three of our patients had azospermia at one year, but they were able to conceive successfully without repeating the test. Among our 88 uh, female patients, 80 80.7% of them were able to regain their menstruation, and only 193 developed secondary amenorrhea. Having a look at our hormonal profile, uh, actually this slide showed um, gonadal hormonal changes pre and post transplant as uh, a secondary objective in our study. Uh, for FSH, uh, if we focus on the high value post transplant indicating a gonadal failure, it was high on 24.5% of them. And for anti malarian hormone, for a female patient uh, with a low value indicating gonadal failure, it was low in 16 out of 17 patients. However, we have, show, we have uh, already mentioned that it was done mainly for patients who had amenorrhea or underwent a workup for gonadal failure. And for testosterone, for a male patient, post-transplant, it was low in 8% of the patient. Again, one caveat in interpreting this table, that is to note not all patients had uh, this test done for them. So uh, in conclusion, uh, in this study, we have shown another favorable advantage of using a non-myeloablative transplant regimen for adult sickle cell patient where majority of male and female patients maintain their fertility potential post-transplant. 45% uh, of our uh, married patients were able to conceive. 
53 of uh, our male patient and 80.7 of our female patient were potentially fertile. And that's led me to my last sentence of my presentation that all adult patients should be uh, counseled for a uh, fertility preservation method before undergoing an allogenic um, hemobiotic stem cell uh, transplant. Um, um, actually, um, at my end of presentation, I would like to acknowledge my colleague in the team, stem cell transplant coordinator, nurses, um, educator, um, stem cell lab, IVF team, um, radiation therapy colleagues, and definitely uh, patient and their family for their co collaboration and for the uh, support. Thank you very much.